Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. So this is another weekly forecast for May 19th until May 26th. So I cover the phases of the moon, the numerology, and just the overall energy within each day. Before I get into this video, I wanted to let you know that there have been people on Instagram pretending to be me. They will follow you, get into your DM, try to sell you a service. I would never reach out to you and try to sell you anything. So we start out the week on Thursday, May 19th. And the numerology for May 19th adds up and reduces to the number three vibration. And the way I do that is very similar to how you calculate your life path number. So with the day having to do with Thursday, Thursday is ruled by Jupiter energy. And Jupiter energy is expansive energy. So I'm looking at the day and just knowing that Jupiter is going to amplify the overall energies of the day. And I also pick a tarot card to tie into the message of the day and the card that's coming up here is the eight of swords in the upright position and let's get into the numerology of the card the number eight talks about cycles and systems and things like that the number eight energy also talks about like focus like people associated with the number eight normally has amazing focus and this is what contributes to that ceo energy that comes with the number eight but when you look at this card you see that this person they're blindfolded their hands are tied but at the same time the struggle and the fear is actually behind them it's not in front of them but based on what they're choosing to focus on they feel like they're stuck in a situation when in all reality all they have to do is walk forward you know so that's like the downside of the number eight energy and i think about the day how the day is associated with jupiter it's a thursday so whatever you are feeling on that day can be amplified i look at the fact that the day adds up and reduces to the number three vibration and the number three energy is creative self-expression but the number three energy is also a very restless energy this is where you know it's like gemini energy we're turning over every stone curious searching for something and also the need for lots of stimulation you know the day is the 19th the number one is us the individual the number nine is endings you know cycles transforming and evolving to the next level but often we free we fear our own evolution because you know the unknown could be so scary and i look at where the moon is and the moon is in capricorn and capricorn moons can be a bit intense and overwhelming for the simple fact that it highlights the need for responsibility and it brings our attention to our stability or lack of or security and the need to be responsible for others so again with the day having to do with jupiter energy jupiter energy is expanding that energy so whatever you are feeling on this day will be amplified um, with a hint of restlessness from the number three energy, just wanting to have a good time. It's, it's more of like an escape energy that I'm feeling when it comes to this day. And some of us might feel so powerless towards almost like this feeling of depression. When I think about the moon and Capricorn, it can give me that at times because this intense burden and feel to be responsible and take care of other people can be paralyzing in place at times, so it can create, you know, depression for some. 
I look at the moon, Mercury in retrograde, and Mercury is in retrograde and it is in Gemini. So the mind is in a place where we are rethinking, you know, past relationships, past connections, how we're communicating. And, you know, with the moon in, 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 with the moon in Capricorn, it's like, you know, we're rethinking about the past, our connections, affiliations, and associations with the past. And sometimes, you know, we might find ourselves in situations where it's like, think about the person who wants to have a reunion or go to their high school reunion or school reunion, but, but fear to do so because they feel like they haven't leveled up enough. You know, so that's the kind of energy that I'm feeling with that day because I look at the moon and the moon is squared to venus conjunct chiron and aries so venus conjunct chiron and aries this is us you know valuing who we are as an individual but at the same time valuing our wounds but with the moon and capricorn it's like because of these wounds i feel like a failure i feel like i'm not good enough and go back to this card energy and that feeling of being stuck but just know that basically feeling of being stuck is something of the mind and not the reality of what's happening. And we can choose to shift out of this energy by where we choose to focus our attention. I know for me, whenever I get into these moods, sometimes I just lay down if I can and just surrender. And, you know, days when I would experience this feeling and I'm in the salon working or just working amongst others, it could be harder because, you know, other people are expecting you to communicate and some people might not be aware of the energies that they're feeling within so they want to be outside of themselves and when you're someone who is very introspective or introverted it could feel overwhelming because say someone who is extroverted they're looking to be stimulated from outside sources when you just want to go within yourself and you know sit with whatever it is that you're feeling so this is where boundaries is extremely important but for overall the day doesn't look too bad for the simple fact that you know, the grand trine that's happening between Pluto, the Sun conjunct Mercury, and also Mars conjunct Neptune and Jupiter and Pisces. So for the most part, it's like, yes, there's these feelings of unsettledness, of responsibility and achievement and legacy. But for the most part, you know, it's not anything that we can't get over. So let's move on to the next day. So the next day is Friday, May 20th. And I thought it was so fitting Friday, May 20th, <clears throat> meaning that, you know, Friday energy deals with Venusian energy and May 20th. The number 20th is such a delicate and, you know, a delicate, sensitive mothering energy. Like when I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about milk for whatever reason. I don't know why that's coming to mind. Not that I drink milk. But anyways, the day just gives me like a nice, like romantic feel to this to a certain extent, even though there might be nothing romantic about it for some of us, but just the combination of Venus, you know, Venus having to do with beauty, romance, love, and you know, balance, you know, our finances and things like that. And the number 20, it just gives such a core cooperative vibe. And the day adds up and reduces to the number four vibration. And the number four energy is such a group team oriented energy. And the moon is in Aquarius. And Aquarian energy does deal with friendship, does deal with groups. And at the same time, Aquarian energy deals with the need for freedom. And the moon is conjunct Pluto. So with the moon conjunct Pluto, this is where, you know, we could feel a bit of intensity from the moon conjuncting Pluto because, you know, Pluto energy is a need for control. Pluto energy deals with transformation. And within transformation, you know, there's the beauty of a baby being born. And then there's the dark side of death and, you know, the different things that come with that energy. So to me, it could be like a... a influx of flow of feelings depending on the individual but on this day the sun does go into gemini so with the sun going into gemini to me it's like you know identifying with ourselves in a way that's light in a way that's freeing and the card associated with this energy is the two of wands in the upright position and the two of wands in the upright position you know you see this person's looking at a globe there's one wand behind them so like let's look at the numerology behind it the one wand behind them was the idea that they had this could be you having an idea to reach out to someone and then the second wand is you actually doing it 
it and him looking at the globe is him looking at you know how can i find this person how can i find this thing it doesn't have to be someone but in some cases it could be you deciding that you're going to start something new you have this grand idea so the num the one the one one the number one is the idea and the one behind him and then the second one is him actually putting things into motion so he can create something tangible but like it's interesting two of wands and the day is the 20th so to me overall this day just feels cooperative and yes there could be some challenges associated with the day when it comes to just sensitivity and being sensitive because the number 20th is a very sensitive number and the number four which is the vibration of the overall day is a number that needs like validation recognition and to a certain extent we all need validation for the, even though like i said whoever validates you owns you so this is where we need to validate ourselves and recognize our need for validation from outsiders but because we were all programmed and conditioned to be who we are by learning our names learning how to speak and things like that we needed validation to know that we were you know you spelt it right you know you're on the right path you're doing you know correctly so it's a part of our built in and makeup so just pay attention to just easily being sensitive to sensitive for the most part and just the need for freedom the need for freedom and the need to control and you know it's important for us to know that like you know we don't need to control other people we need to <clears throat> not control ourselves but allow ourselves allow ourselves and be completely comfortable with who we are and i find that for me like the more I grow into myself and give myself permission to be the less judgmental I am when it comes to myself and the less I judge myself, the less I judge others, where I find myself nowadays saying like, well, you know, they must know why they did that. Like, you know, it's not for me to put down a judgment and assume or whatever. And that's the same that I allow for myself. It's like, okay, I made a mistake. You know, I didn't know any better. And now that I know better, I'll do better next time and just leave it as that and, you know, make it so simple. So we move on and we move on the 21st, which is Saturday. And Saturday, the 21st, Saturday deals with Saturn and Saturn energy deals with like Saturn energy deals with responsibility. It deals with time. But with the day being the 21st and the day adding up and reducing to the number five vibration and then the moon in Aquarius, this could be a day where we just want to, it's like this could be a day where you made plans to get a lot of things done. You know, you might not be working, you know, you're at home, it's the weekend and you're going to take care of a lot of things, but you can find yourself completely ditching the things that you set out to do because you wake up in the day and it's like you wake up in the day with, you wake up that day with one intention and at the end of the evening, it's like, what the hell happened? So this is a day where it's important to just be intentional and conscious as in set like alarms to guide. I always feel like when it comes to five vibration, alarms are the best thing to snap us back into the moment of the day because it is so easy to get distracted and carried away within the day. And then also to the day being Saturday and associated with Saturn, it's like we might, you know, F off the day and do what the hell we want to do, but then feel this sense of like, you know, guilt for not completing all the tasks. So this is why on this day it is important to be clear about at just one thing that needs to get done to get you to wherever it is that you need to do. Um, wherever it is that you're trying to achieve, do that one thing and allow yourself to just be for the rest of the day because this will be a day where it's like, you know, yes, the moon is going to feel overwhelmed because it's conjuncting Saturn. But at the same time, it's like, it's like what I mentioned earlier. It's like when I mentioned the moon in Capricorn and the level of responsibility or burden. So it's like with the moon conjunct Saturn, this is where we can police ourselves like crazy, but instead like nothing good comes from it because procrastination paralyzes, you know, someone into place where it's like absolutely nothing got done. And I'm looking at how the moon conjunct Saturn and the moon is being squared by North Node conjuncts 
north node conjuncts uranus so north node conjunct uranus to me this is a sense of purpose and a sense of urgency when it comes to purpose and this is where we're thinking about all the things that needs to get done and just paralyze in place and nothing gets done so it's like <clears throat> you know one can find themselves on the couch just binging something and eating junk because you, you, you had all these things that needed to get done, but just the thought of all of it just felt so overwhelming. And, you know, like I always say, we procrastinate out of fear, fear that we don't have what it takes or it could be boredom. And if boredom is the case for you, then scrap that and move on because you don't want to waste time. The energy here is the Knight of Swords in the upright position. And like I was mentioning earlier, overthinking, feeling overburdened with responsibility because Mercury is in retrograde, you know, so the mind is thinking about all kinds of things. The mind is down memory lane. The moon is in a place of restriction and responsibility and, you know, needing to deliver, needing to achieve and also to wanting freedom more than anything else. So it's like the mind is running at a mile an hour. And like I mentioned, the day adds up and reduces to the number five vibration. So this is where, you know, we find ourselves, you know, like moving at the speed of light and then absolutely nothing gets done. And at the end of the day, we're like, damn, where did the day go? It's that kind of vibe. And it's important, like I said, be clear about what it is that you're trying to achieve that day. Use alarm clocks to snap you back into place. So we move on to Sunday. And Sunday is associated with the sun. And by then, the, the moon is moving into Pisces. And the moon is being squared by the sun conjunct Mercury. And, you know, on Sunday, Sunday deals with the sun. You know, the sun illuminates all things. It's a, it, The sun is vibrant and it shines light on, you know, it shines light on everything and it gives light to everything with the warmth. The day Sunday adds up and reduces to the number six vibration. Whenever I see the number six vibration on a Sunday, or even the day being May 22nd, I think about brunch. Like I think about brunch because the number six energy is such a social energy. It's an energy that wants to like get together and connect with like community, friends, family. You know, this is the energy where it's like we have get togethers. Like I mentioned, we connect for brunch, tea, whatever, like let's get social. That's the energy of the number six vibration. And also to the day, Sunday, you know, shining light, vibrance. And the day is the 22nd. So the number 22 adds up, reduces to the number four. The number 22 energy is one that talks about over nurture. It's like doing too much. So on this day, we can find ourselves doing way too much, you know, when it comes to serving the community or giving back to others. Because I look at the moon going into Pisces and conjuncting Saturn. So the moon going into Pisces conjunct Saturn, this is where again, Saturn conjunct the moon, responsibility, feeling the need to be responsible for others, feeling the need to like police our ourselves and taking on all this unnecessary responsibility. And then the moon and, and Pisces wanting to serve selflessly, serve selflessly to the point where, you know, it could be dangerous. Like, you know, I always say this is the person that offers their rent to someone else, loan their rent to someone else, hope that, you know, loan their rent or their mortgage to someone else, hope that they'll get it back in time so they can take care of their own responsibility and don't and then and don't and then ends up in a bad place. You know, so this is where we could be so selfless to where it's like, it's it's silly, you know. So the moon is in a place of escapism. So on this day, you might find yourself wanting to escape away and just like spend time alone, even though, like I mentioned, the overall energies of the day, it wants to be social. I look at the sun and the sun is in Gemini and Mercury is conjuncting the sun. So this is where, you know, the mind is, this is where you, you get invitation, you know, and make plans, but having a hard time following through with the plan. The overall energy of the day, it's like, okay, you know, let's get together, let's connect. But then again, the moon conjunct Saturn is that burden where, you know, this is where we overthink and project and think, okay, you know, I feel like I have nothing to share. My life hasn't evolved as much. Like, you know, you don't know that. So, you know, a lot, give yourself a break and don't allow the negative self-talk to paralyze you into place and stop you from having great experiences and connecting with people who want to connect with you. 
The energy associated with the day is the five of swords in the upright position. And as you can see on the five of swords, you know, there's these two people in the background. They look sad and their swords are on the ground and the person is holding three swords and they look a bit mischievous. It's almost like, it's not almost like, to me, this is the energy of like having a debate and winning an argument, but winning the argument at the expense of like losing a connection forever. So I look at the the mercury in retrograde this and conjuncting the sun so you know when mercury is in conjunction with the sun this is where you know say in your natal chart you have mercury conjunct with the sun this is where communication flows so quickly but the downside when it comes to that is that we can say too much and not and say too much because i also think about mercury and gemini conjunct the sun and, you know, Gemini energy is that curious energy that sometimes talk, deals with gossip where it's like we talk so much to where we end up saying things we have no business. So like I mentioned, it's Sunday, the day adds up to six. This is where we're out having brunch or connecting with other people, even though to a certain extent our inner world feels challenged by our connections and our communication. And a lot of us can find ourselves in situations where it's like, pay attention to when you're around certain people and how you might feel uncomfortable being silent to where you feel like you need to fill in the silence with sound by saying something. And sometimes finding yourself saying something out of nervousness where maybe it was best to be quiet and challenge yourself to sit in the silence because there is a challenge between the inner world and just the overall silence energy, the energy of being silent and still. So I move on to Monday. Monday is associated with the moon and the moon energy deals with our, you know, sensitivities, bringing our attention to things that, you know, that drives us on an inner and emotional level. The day adds up and reduces to the number seven vibration and the number seven vibration is a very introspective and deep energy. This is where we want truth, but the truth has to come from within. So this is where we can't ask other people to tell us what our truth is. This is where we have to dedicate time and silence, time with ourselves, ask the question, be clear about the question and just allow it to come from us. And introspection, meditation and time and silence is much needed when it comes to this. And I just look at the overall psychic energy associated with the day. I say psychic energy because it's the 23rd and the number 23 adds up, reduces to the number five vibration. And the number five vibration deals with telepathy. You know, those who are strongly associated with the number five energy um, has this, it's like clear audience. You know, a lot of people associated with the number five energy has a hard time being in silence because they're afraid of what they will hear. But it's like once mastered, once this energy is mastered, this is where these people turn into amazing channels. But we all have that ability to channel that energy. So the number seven is like life path seven, the vibration of the day deals with the crown chakra. And this is where we get this knowing. And then I look at the moon being in Pisces. And the moon can be in a more intuitive psychic place. And, you know, with the moon being in Pisces and so close to Neptune, the moon is in a place of like, it's like connecting to different realms and reality also to escapism. And I think about, say, in like religious books, like say the Bible, where when God spoke to people, a lot of the times they were by themselves. So to me, this is us going within ourselves and just getting got getting higher counsel getting guidance from higher counsel because like i mentioned the day is seven seven is introspection going deep the day um the the vibration of the day is seven and but the day is the 23rd the number two is our in, in our intuition tying into our sacral chakra the number three is the solar plexus that knowing and then the moon day monday it's you know the the guidance from the moon intuition so to me this is a day where we will find ourselves like isolated within ourselves even if you are in you work around a bunch of people you will be in the cub cubicle 
of yourself and to me this is a great day for like guidance guidance in the sense that you know to me this is a day where you ask a question and you allow the answer to come to you and the answer might not just come to you in some random mysterious way where it's like this magical voice says something you might be walking to the bathroom and you hear someone say something and that thing clicks it's like for example you know one day when i was in the salon and <clears throat> I was feeling super drowsy, super tired. And my client um, says something about her iron being low. And it's like something clicked. I think she was walking with a cup of ice. And she mentioned something about her iron being low and something clicked. And then I went to Whole Foods and found these iron supplements that are all natural and made out of just only beets. There's no chemicals or anything in, to, in it. So when I consume it, my body will take it, receive it <clears throat> as if I'm just eating vegetables. And while she was under the dryer, ran to Whole Foods down the street, got the supplement, and it's almost like a light bulb switch. And all of a sudden, like my energy, like just popped on and just my overall mind and clarity just flipped. She ended up going and getting the tablets and ever since then they've balanced out everything for her. But I was asking, why am I so drowsy? Why am I so exhausted? And then she just blurred something out so random and, and that was the guidance that I need. And I found out that um, I used to deplete my iron because I was overhydrating myself. Like I haven't seen any studies or anything that says that, but once I stopped overhydrating myself and didn't realize how much I was overhydrating myself, that's when stuff balanced out. And you know, back then when I used to overhydrate myself and maybe someone needs to hear this, it's like, it's like basically when you overhydrate yourself, it could cause your brain to swell. And I remember back then I would be doing these videos and it's almost like I was pushing through because it's like I could literally feel my head hurting and just dizziness and blurriness and not knowing exactly why, realizing like balance is, is extremely important. And how did I find out I was overhydrating myself? Guidance, like intuitively something was presented to me. All of a sudden I felt the need to search something one thing led to another and like putting pieces of a puzzle together and then i stopped and it's interesting because i don't know how i fell off when it came to that because i always said that you know the best way to hydrate the body is through fruits and vegetables because when we're eating fruits and vegetables it's almost like a time release capsule how we're being hydrated it's like we're being hydrated where the hydration is flowing in in a way that's consistent and not harsh where you know before i would gulp down these large bottles of i would gulp down water and to me it's almost like the water would be like a flush and flush out nutrients and things out of my body always leaving me depleted you know maybe someone needed to hear that so when it comes to the card associated with the day the card associated with the day is the King of Cups in the reversal position. And I feel like the King of Cups is so fitting because we're talking about water energy. You know, moon day, the moon deals with emotions. And this card showing up in the reversal position, to me, in the reversal position, I think about, say, Pisces energy, you know, cancer energy, water energy in the reversal position, meaning that I think about how, you know, how we can be so sensitive to the point where, you know, I think of manipulation, I think of the need for control, but control in a very passive way. And, you know, like moon in, in cancer and say the downside, the negative aspect when it comes to this energy or even cancer moon or not just cancer moon, cancer energy, Scorpio energy, you know, Pisces energy. The downside of water energy is manipulation and doing it in a way that's gaslighting where one questions, you know, their sanity because it's like covert and acts where it's not direct and aggressive and in your face. And maybe that's something that someone might be experiencing or maybe someone might be so pessimistic and looking at the negative side of things to where you're depleting yourself on an emotional level because you know stuck like you know this is where we could feel stuck feeling sorry for ourselves and from the you know us feeling sorry for ourselves we start manifesting and attracting more things that validate you know our pity party and then you know things get out of control and worse so that's something to think about also so i move on to tuesday and Tuesday is associated with Mars. 
<clears throat> and the day is the 24th and the 24th adds up and reduces to the number six vibration and to the number six energy and the vibration for the overall day is the number eight so the day adds up reduces to the number eight energy and the day is the 24th so that's the number six energy and you know mars is the energy that you know basically dominates the day and when i think about mars energy especially you know tuesday which is in the middle of the week I think about how, you know, when we get to Wednesday, we're like, oh, hump, hump day, we're almost there. Because I think about Monday, how Mondays could be so emotional. And, you know, a lot of the times we might not realize why, why Mondays are so exhausting because, you know, we're going, some people are going back. It's the beginning of a work week and having to deal with their emotions and the emotions of everybody else. And that could be so exhausting. And even if you work from home, maybe you're connecting and dealing with other people and just the intensity of the emotions could be so exhausting. And then I, you go to Tuesday and, you know, Tuesday is associated with Mars and Mars wants to push. You know, this is that pushy energy, wanting to push and wanting to get things done and getting it done at like, you know, aggression to a certain extent. And I think about the vibration of the overall day, the number eight energy. And the number eight energy could be one where, you know, we abuse power because the number eight deals with authority. This is the police officer, the overseer, or it's the student or the teacher for life. But I look at how Mars, it, the moon is conjuncting Mars at 29 degree and 29 degree is a bit of an intense degree, just like Mercury is at 29 degree. Why is it an intense degree? Because it adds up and reduces to the number 11 energy. And the number 11 energy reflects masculine energy, aggressive masculine energy, because the number one is repeated. And we always talk about how we don't reduce um, master numbers. And I think, you know, that that thought that we put on it is where, you know, the number two energy is present because one plus one does reduce to the number two, but we don't reduce it. So to me, this is where the turbulence come from masculine energy that isn't allowed to be feminine, that doesn't incorporate any feminine energy. So this is taking action and not reflecting. So the moon conjuncts Mars and Mars is in that turbulent space where it's like we're motivated, action oriented and wanting to do too much. And even though the moon is in Pisces, the moon is in a dreamy place. So to me, this gives me driving drunk vibes, driving drunk vibes in the sense that the moon is conjunct Neptune. The moon is in a place where it's looking at things through rose colored glasses, but at the same time too, Mars is conjunct the moon. So this is where we could be unaware of our own motivations. And when I read natal charts and I see that, that could be, and I'm looking at the time and it's 11, 11. So that could be something that's so overwhelming for a person because a person person might be, you know, trying to achieve certain things in life, but because, you know, say Mars is in the 12th house or it's in Pisces or conjuncts Neptune or whatever, they might not realize that their motivation is hidden from them. So a person might be motivated by say materialism, motivated by greed, but don't realize they're motivated by greed. So they keep making these decisions and not know like why the outcome keeps happening the way that they, it's happening because they're unaware of their own motivation. So yes, when it comes to Tuesday, Mars Day, May 24th, Tuesday, May 24th. The number 24, the number two is nurturing, it's sensitive. The number four is cooperative and it adds up to the number six, which is community oriented. But at the same time too, to me, this gives me the vibe of, you know, it's like throwing a fit because things aren't the way how we want them to be or how we expected them to be. I look at how Mercury is at 29 degrees and mercury is at 29 degrees in taurus so to me this is turbulent this is turbulent in the sense that the mind is in a space where it's like overthinking about how we can take action when it comes to our finances stability foundation and getting more and that could be a waste of a waste of energy in the sense that not allowing ourselves to think things through because again the moon is in a place where we are motivated in ways that we cannot see and looking at things through rose colored glasses so and also too with the number eight vibration of the day the number eight is amazing when it comes to the focus but the downside of that number eight focus is like basically having such like having such focus to where it's like 
you can't see anything around you. So if something is in front of you and you didn't place it there, you're completely overlooking it. So this is where we can abuse power and don't even realize we're abusing power because we're so focused on one thing. It's like what comes to mind is like, say for example, when they'll say we have, they're using draconian measures to get things done. They might be so focused on achieving this goal to where they're missing out on the abuse and an abuse of power that is happening in the process of trying to achieve this goal and the energy associated with the day is the hermit in the reversal position and having the hermit in the reversal position is so fitting because like i mentioned moon conjunct mars tuesday mars energy wanting to take action wanting to be aggressive wanting to get things done moon and pisces this is where we can be so sensitive and emotional but not seeing how our actions are negatively affecting other people, you know, but we're so, you know, poor me, woe is me type of energy or looking at things in a dreamy way, but not seeing how our own motivation is hidden from us. And the hermit in the upright position normally, you know, talks about us going within and having introspection. But the reversal of this energy talks about a lack of introspection, a lack of self-awareness. So this is something that we have to pay attention to when it comes to um, Tuesday the 24th, like how are we showing up? How is life responding to us on a whole will give us a great idea of how we are showing up. And we move on to the last day that I'll cover because of course the next video is going to, you know, start with Thursday because we start our week with Thursday. You know, we start our week with Jupiter energy or expansive. So on Wednesday, Wednesday is the 25th and it adds up and reduces to the number nine vibration. And by this day, the moon is in Aries. So the moon is in Aries and it is conjunct Chiron and also to Jupiter. So the moon is in a place where it is expansive. It is in a place where it sees itself as wounded, but at the same time, it sees itself as wounded, but blessed. And I know that sounds interesting, but yes, moon conjunct Jupiter conjunct Chiron. It's like the moon is in a place where it also escapes and gains knowledge about its own wounds. Like what comes to mind for me, because like I have Sag in the fourth house and, <clears throat> you know, at some point I realized that I escape through knowledge. So this could be where, you know, say I got a broken heart or something happened and I'm hurt and I'm devastated. I'll go and start researching and start learning and understanding what happened. And from that, it's like, you know, I'll escape what's happening and feel better. But at the same time, like, you know, I never dealt with the emotions that I was feeling. So because the emotions weren't dealt with, you know, this is where, you know, we could keep getting triggered and the same thing keeps happening over and over and over again. But the day is Wednesday. Wednesday deals with communication because this is an energy that rule, is ruled by Mercury. And where is Mercury at the time? Mercury is at 28 degrees in Taurus, conjuncting the North Node. And the North Node is also conjuncting Uranus. So this is a day where we can find ourselves like, you know, struggling when it comes to coming to the realization of things that we have to release in our lives. I say release because the day adds up and reduces to the number nine vibration. And the number nine talks about transformation and evolution and just endings and letting go. But, you know, the ending is always the beginning because everything goes around in a circle. So this is where we need to not fear and allow ourselves to let go. So yes, Mercury is in a place of reflection, reflection, reflecting about legacy, reflecting about identity, reflecting about goals and ambition and our financial situation, our traditions, you know, what has got us to where we are in the present moment or what we have achieved. The day is the 25th. The number two is nurturing. The number two is putting things in, you know, order. And the number two is also unity. The number five is communication, it's balance, and it's needed change. So the day adds up and reduces to the number seven, which gives an introspective feel when it comes to how we nurture and how we communicate and the balance that we bring to things. And the day adding up to the number seven gives this whole, you know, introspecting 
introspective feel, but this is where we can find ourselves being so clingy. I say clingy in the sense that the number nine energy can be a clingy energy because it's a fear, it's afraid of change. You know, this is humanity, humanitarianism, where we connect with others and we serve others. So the number nine energy is associated with others. And then the 25, the five needs constant stimulation. The number two is nurturing. So this is a day when we can find ourselves clinging to others. The sun is also in Gemini, you know, so we want to connect with others. But at the same time, too, the moon conjuncts Chiron um, and Jupiter and Aries. So the moon is in a place where it's like we're focused on ourselves, could be a little bit selfish and self-centered. But at the same time, we want to play with others. So this is where it's important to be compromised, to have compromise when it comes to connecting with others and ask ourselves, are we connecting with others as a way of escaping ourselves? Or, you know, is there a genuine need to connect with others? And I look at Mars conjunct Neptune. So this is where, um, to a certain extent, our motivations are hidden from us. And we're also motivated by expansion and knowledge. So this could be, you know, we're motivated by escapism when it comes to, say, Wednesday the 25th. And the tarot card associated with the day is the lovers. And the lover's energy to me talks about two becoming one. The lover's energy is also associated with Gemini energy and Gemini energy to me is that curious energy. But at the same time too, when I look at the lovers, <clears throat> I think about Gemini energy and Gemini's being associated with the twins, where it's like the twins reflecting, say, you know, two different extremes or two different um, what's the word that's coming to mind? You know, being a part of the same plane, but two to two opposite, um, opposite, um, opposing sides of the same plane. So, you know, when it comes to the 25th, it's important to realize that, like I said, you know, the ending is the beginning. So there's no fear when it comes to letting go. And I look at the lovers and I look at Gemini energy and Gemini's curiosity always seeking and searching for something so it's like when it comes to the thing that we're always seeking and searching for we're searching for ourselves our relationship with ourselves our higher self you know that's the twin flame soulmate connection that we see and the people who we are attracted to who feels familiar because you know we think they're twin flame soulmate basically they're holding a mirror that's helping us to recognize things about ourselves learn things about ourselves and understand and connect with ourselves in ways that we never could before to me it's almost like they are that knock on the door that wakes us up because we've overslept you know so yeah when it comes to wednesday you know with the moon and aries conjunct chiron we could be a bit sensitive, but at the same time, aggressive. You know, I think about the child that, you know, will be playing and playing in a way that's aggressive, but then if played with the same way that they play, could be very sensitive and easily start crying. You know, so it's this is where we have to be considerate about how we are considerate and aware of how we're relating to other people and how we're showing up. And, you know, basically, to, to basically have the balance or to have the experiences that we want because it's interesting how you know sometimes we'll say I don't know why people treat me this way but it's like how are we showing up that's welcoming or repelling or doing whatever because we play a part in it that's why you know you are the most powerful person that you know and you are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality and we create our reality based on how we are interacting and participating participating with our reality so at the end of the day even when something seems bigger than us you know it's really not it's just an illusion because we are the creators we are the co-creators you know so it was a pleasure sharing this with you guys if you would like to get your natal chart done the link is in the description box below if you would like to support the channel visit the website purchase one of the t-shirts link also in the description box below and also too if you haven't subscribed to the website um, visit the link in the description box below visit the website scroll to the bottom and subscribe so you can sign up for the monthly newsletter where i send out a monthly astrological forecast only one letter goes out if you're still here with me i would love to hear about it please let me know by dropping me a pink heart in the comment box below i would love to hear from you
Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.